Let me say that I have been waiting to do a topic like this for a hell of a long time as I just clean my glasses to make sure I can actually see shit. Blizzard and Activision. Now, you know you have a reputation when a company like From Software puts out a game and people see that you're putting it out as the publisher and people automatically lose their shit. Oh my God, From Software is teaming up with Activision. It's the worst thing in the world, you idiots. They're gonna kill your game. <clears throat> Oh, it's really hard to do that voice. Ouch. So obviously you can tell where the video is going to be going today. We'll be talking all about that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful company slash potential spawn of Satan, Activision. Now, let me, let me put a little disclaimer. Some of the stuff I say may trigger you. If it does, I don't care. Truth does not care about your feelings. Moving on, if you pay attention to the MMO community, you will no doubt know that Wildstar, the cutesy, kind of warlike, very stereotyped MMO from Carbine Studios is unfortunately going away because Carbine Studios is shutting down. Now, when I say stereotyped, I mean like you had a general who fits the moniker of the American general stereotype, like the American militaristic, warmongering, bloodthirsty stereotype. And it was hilarious, but it was a game that was meant to be a kind of cartoonish, really fun MMO that kind of made elements of the game, took them and put them on their head and made it a really enjoyable experience. All I know is what I know from the trailers. So you had things like the really weird kind of goofy war mode where guilds had their own bases. And that's something that immediately I latched onto. I was like, yes, finally, there's a damn MMO that does it right and gives us the ability to make our own bases and have our own, I guess, like little kingdoms, little, little, uh, little fortresses, you know? And for the most part, that's, that's all I really know about it. When the game came out, I didn't really play it. Um, I had a lot of stuff going on in my life. And I was playing a lot of other games. I was playing Warframe, I was playing stuff like World of Warcraft and things like that, and I didn't really have the time to invest in a new game. Because something like Wildstar, being an MMO, does take a lot of time to invest to really enjoy. So I didn't have the time to invest in it. And do I feel bad about not playing it now? Yeah. It's kind of like what happened with Paragon. You know, you look back on Paragon after it's gone, and you're like, well, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a MOBA fan. I should have played that more. When you look at... Wildstar as a, as a whole. It creates this concerning question in the back of my head, which is like, okay, it's gone now. What does that do in regards to things like World of Warcraft, like RuneScape, like Final Fantasy XIV Realm Reborn, and all the other little small, you know, multi massive multiplayer online games like Warframe and stuff like that? Like, how does that affect them as a whole? Because you have to understand, it's not just one game. It's one game that's part of a genre of hundreds of games. And when you lose one of those games, or when one of those, you know, obviously it was a free to play game, but when, when a developer quits, it removes some of the competition on other companies. So it's now a question of, are the other companies gonna be lazy? Are those companies gonna just rake in all the player base that left Wildstar when it eventually shut down? There's a ton of questions that have to be answered with this. and. Perhaps the most concerning one is how is it going to affect the industry overall? Obviously, when something like Paragon fell, Epic Games went on to make Fortnite, which is one of the most hotly contested games. <laughs> Love it or hate it. I have no opinion piece. But Paragon never really affected anything because it wasn't, it was a niche kind of MOBA. It was, you know, it never really contended with stuff like Heroes of the Storm or more notably League of Legends or Dota. And then, of course, you have the controversy about the developers of Smite saying, hey, that game fell through, but come play our game, because at least it's playable. It's like, oh, that's just... Oh, I could get into that, but I'm not going to. So it raises a couple of questions. And obviously, going back to the question of how does it affect the industry, we have to look again at the competition. World of Warcraft. Now, World of Warcraft is a huge game. It's been around for over 14 years. Blizzard Entertainment has put out a MOBA, an MMO, an FPS, Battle Arena game, shall we say, with Overwatch, an RTS, and a top-down, or er, like a semi-top-down RPG. All in the time it's taken games like Call of Duty to reach their 14th generic iteration. But at the same time, a lot of people have concerns. Namely, concerns about the recent decision to put Black Ops 4 on the Battle.net server, or on the platform, on the launcher. So the problem with this is that I did a lot of digging. 
people are extremely valid in their belief that Activision is a scummy company. They are, after all, a company who has made 14 copies of the same game and just copy-pasted them one after another and had no problem with raking in the money. They're touted as just as scummy as EA, who put out a very bland version of uh, Battlefield, oh, sorry, Battlefront, when most of us diehard fans of the original Battlefront games enjoyed something akin to, in this day and age, something as glorious to an RPG player as EverQuest. The problem here stems into another similar dilemma that happened with a certain title that really holds a lot of people's, well, hearts. Warframe. Now, Digital Extremes, the company that helped make the multiplayer for Bioshock 2, which is arguably still one of the best multiplayers of all time, in my opinion, they also helped make the Unreal series. To look at this logically, Digital Extremes is not a small company. It's helped make a few good titles, a few strong titles that have a lot of cult followings. And for the most part, they've made their own game that no one really thought would take off, and they've helped propel it into stardom. Now, the one thing you have to understand is that when you get the offer to merger a company, most of the time it's for monetary reasons. Sometimes it's because a company likes how successful your business is and wants a share of your little monetary pie. Think of it like a more permanent version of sponsoring someone's video on YouTube. Digital Extremes was approached by a rather notorious company, Perfect World Entertainment. Now, Perfect World Entertainment went through a food holding company called Sumpo Food Holdings Incorporated, or Limited, LTD. And they ended up, I think, getting only like 15% of all of the stock in the company. But a lot of people were immediately outraged by the fact that this, for all intents and purposes, really greedy company was looking to get in on Digital Extremes, and if they had gotten a major share, most of the player base warned, things would not be too great for the player base. Cue the developers saying, whoa, 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 calm down, calm down. We understand. We understand. It's all right, it's gonna be okay. And they said something to the effects of, we understand that people are upset, but know that we have always had a vision for this game and we will continue to build towards that inevitable dream and pursue the vision of what the game should be. Now, for those of you who have no idea how stocks work, when this happened in 2014, I did a lot of extensive research to make sure that the game that honestly was my bread and butter at the time wasn't going to become the corporate holding of some really greedy arseholes. Essentially how it works is you have two different types. You have a merger and you have a hostile takeover. In order to get a hostile takeover, you have to own more... You have to own the majority share. Now let's say you have 50% owned by Digital Extremes, and then everyone else is kind of little, you know, little investors, little shareholders that don't really have a lot of say in the company. They only own like maybe 2%. But you have 10 people who own 2%. That leaves you with, if my math isn't failing me, which it might be, is 40% left. Now, if a major company comes in and buys that 40%, you still own the majority of the stocks in your own company. You see AT&T do this all the time, where they buy more stocks of their own company back so that they can jack up the price of stocks. It's scummy, but in this case, DE owning half, I think they own like 52% of their own stock, still, they now have and will always maintain the majority of the say in what they make. Now that we've gone through that lengthy explanation of what the hell all that was about with Digital Extremes, which happened in 2014, we go way back to 2007 to 2008. Activision wanted to buy up Vivendi Games. Vivendi Games was the holding company for both Sierra Entertainment, the people behind Spyro, Prototype, and the much beloved Crash Bandicoot series, and the holding company of one Blizzard Entertainment. Now what ended up happening was they bought out Vivendi Games, which happens from time to time. And when they bought out Vivendi Games, they inevitably scrapped Sierra Entertainment, which, again, happens. But they left Blizzard Entertainment mostly autonomous. They don't really care what they do as long as they make good products that sell well. And for the most part, they let them do their own thing. Cue all these people who are extremely pissed off saying, oh, because there was a Destiny 2 thing and Blizzard, 
the actual Facebook accounts playing. It's like, oh, I'm unsubscribing from Blizzard. This is so stupid. I'm only here for actual good content. It's like, you can claim all you want that Blizzard only makes quality, right? That's, that's their thing. They only make the highest quality stuff available. But we've seen a few times throughout history that that is not always the case. Now, hate this or don't, it's entirely up to you. But Mr. Pandaria was often considered one of the weaker expansions. Wad considered the worst. Hell, in 2008, right after or around the same time the merger was closing, Blizzard released one of their most popular expansions in history for World of Warcraft with Wrath of the Lich King. So you really can't say that Activision has too much say in whether or not the games suck. Sure, they might be a scumbag company who's made clone after clone after clone of Call of Duty because it sells well and we like money. But at the same time, they're not ultimately at fault for Blizzard's shortcomings, at least not entirely. Most of it comes down to Blizzard wanting to innovate. Which again brings us back to that whole thing of Wildstar closing down. You have to innovate to be above the competition. To be better than the competition, you have to be either too large to fail, which usually doesn't work out, or, in the case of things like Mr. Pandaria and Warlords of Draenor, you have to innovate and try new systems and see what works. Because seeing what works can often lead to a great success. Now, one of the best examples of what worked really, really well was Wrath of the Lich King. Wrath of the Lich King, you have a titular hero who was built up throughout Warcraft, the RTS series from 1 to 3, Arthas Menethil. He's finally gotten free of the Frozen Throne. He's woken up. He's ready to wreck some shit. And we, throughout most of the expansion, had to deal with him mocking us, being one step ahead, always proving that he was a badass. And when we finally got to fight him, in the very end, he killed us and then tried to resurrect us as champions of the Scourge, proving the entire time that he really doesn't give a shit about us and that we are weak. And this was after we destroyed his phylactery, which made him stronger than he was when we fought him in the raid. It was a highly successful expansion and is often, still to this day, considered to be one of Blizzard's best works. Sure, you got the naysayers who bitch about Blizzard and Diablo 3 not being as good as it used to be and needing some new content, but at the same time, Diablo is one of those weird games. Like, new content would be great, a new class would be nice, but at the same time it's not really needed because the current formula works so well. You hop in in a new season and you do, you pick a class, maybe two or three, and you see how far you can get. It's a system that works really, really well for the content that's there. And sure, they've added new things throughout the history of the game. Seasons, rifts, greater rifts, rift challenges, weekly rift attempts that give you a lot of resources if you manage to pull it off, and most recently seasonal themes like double treasure goblins or whatever the hell season 15 is going to bring us. To address with the final bit of this video, to address the hatred surrounding Blizzard having filthy, treasonous, shitty Activision games on their launcher, it makes sense. Activision is the parent company. Blizzard has a formulaic launcher. Well, formulaic is a dumb word, isn't it? <sighs> Trying to sound smart. <laughs> Blizzard has a network that already exists, a framework for a online launcher for PC games that would really work well with, unfortunately, depending on who you ask, Black Ops 4 and Destiny 2. It doesn't matter whether you hate it or whether you love it, Activision doesn't want to waste hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially building up a new framework for their own, kind of like how Origin did when they built their own framework for their own dedicated launcher. It's already there. Blizzard agreed to let them use it because it's their parent company, so hell, it saves Activision money, and it gives PC players something to play that's actually, you know, debatably okay. And speaking of debatably okay, I'm, for one, kind of excited for Destiny 2 Forsaken the expansion that came out recently. If only because we get to punch Aldrin Sov in the face, repeatedly, until he is dead. Because I don't care who you are, I am the main hero of Destiny, damn it. And I'm not gonna get shit-talked by some awoken scumbag who answers to his sister like he's a lost puppy. And spoilers, he killed Nathan Fillion. So, um, yeah, it's just revenge at this point. Anyways, I just wanted to get all that off my chest. You know, it's sad to see Wildstar go, but it's also 
inevitable for some games. We saw it happen with Paragon, we saw it happen with Battleborn, and now we're seeing it happen with Wildstar. You have to be innovative, and you have to have a good niche concept that people can really latch onto to be successful. Anyways, I have been your humble host, this Aubrey from Everneth Gaming and Everneth News. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me this week. If you like what you saw, please leave a like and a comment, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Links down below in the description to my Patreon page and my Twitter, where I promise I do occasionally post. Sometimes. And I hope you're all having a fantastic Saturday and or Sunday, depending on when you're watching this. And other than that, enjoy your weekend.